Hi everyone, I'm Vanessa Hill. I'm a science communicator and sleep researcher, and I'm here today to discuss the Sleep Peace and Project with Max Richter and David Eagleman. Max, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure, I'm a composer. Mm -hmm. uh, in 2013 or 14, I started thinking about making a piece which could function as a place to rest. And sleep in a way is an inquiry into how music and the sleeping mind can fruitfully coexist. David. I'm a neuroscientist at Stanford and I um, you know, spend a third of my life sleeping and I'm very <laughs> interested in that topic. Let's explore the sleep piece and project. What is the form of sure. the project? Okay, so sleep is an eight and a half hour continuous piece of instrumental music. It comes out of conversations that my partner Yulia and I were having uh, when we had tiny kids <laughs> and I'd be playing, um, you know, a concert somewhere else in the world and she would be listening into the stream but it would be at some crazy time and she was sort of half asleep, half awake, listening to this music and she reported the sort of emotionality of that experience and how the music seemed to be affecting her in a deeper way. And the other thing is that Around 2013, 2014, 4G internet moved into our pockets. So we had the whole internet all the time, which is, you know, great fun, of course, but also in a way quite demanding psychologically. Uh, and I was thinking about how could I, you know, make a, a place to rest. And then I was thinking about large immersive works, um, you know, the paintings of Barnett Newman or Roscoe or a big novel kind of alternate realities, which are like a kind of a shelter from the day to day. And I thought, well, we could make a big piece of music, which has that function. With the thought we can make a big piece of music, was there a aha moment or a kind of eureka moment, like a thought that you had when you were like, you know what, I, I'm going to do this for eight and a half hours? Yeah, well, I think one of the things which is nice about doing creative work is before you have the idea, you don't have the idea. And then when you've had the idea, it seems obvious. Since you first composed this piece of mm -hmm. music, the sleep genre of yeah. music, I suppose, if, if we can call it that, has changed quite dramatically. Yes. What's your take on that? It's absolutely true that music and sleep have been sort of connected for you know hundreds, if not thousands of years sure. in all kinds of uh, cultures. Yeah, I mean, a lot of other people have, have started to kind of explore this space. Uh, and of course, as you were mentioning, sort of all kinds of AI interventions, uh, which is like a, a whole other kind of worms. <laughs> <laughs> is there a perfect tempo for sleep, a perfect uh, uh, composition for sleep in that sense? Well, I think the sonics of sleep and the way the music is constructed have, have a kind of, they obviously have physical effects, but they also have a sort of poetic effect. And I mm -hmm. think that resonates for us, you know, the slow tempo suggests a feeling of scale, of bigness. Mm -hmm. um, the, the kinds of instrumentation I use in it and the overall spectrum also suggest that. And it, there is a sort of a feeling of spaciousness and I guess kind of gravitas about it. There are very little high frequency information because high frequencies wake you up mm -hmm. in the way that low frequencies don't. So there's a lot of subsonics in sleep. I sort of modeled that spectrum on uh, the spectrum that the unborn baby hears in the womb. It evokes our first experience of hearing, of perceiving, of being, um, and very deliberately so. And then for the last hour or so, the spectrum opens up and you get more high frequencies. So it's like there's a sort of a birth at the end of sleep, you know, the sun comes up when we play it live and the spectrum has opened up and you get this sort of feeling of a new beginning. We sort of arrive in the morning, we've been playing for eight hours or you've been listening for eight hours and there's this community of a few hundred people who have sort of gone on this journey together. 